Yes, guys, what's going on? Welcome to Stretford Paddock. I am Adam McCola. Manchester United have lost their first game of the season against Crystal Palace. <sighs> We lost against them last season at Old Trafford in the Premier League and we've gone and done it again this time around as well. 3-1 on the day. Wilfred Zaha was absolutely fantastic for them. Andros Townsend got the opening goal for them as well. There was a little bit of controversy with VAR, penalty decisions, this, that and the other. But ultimately, Manchester United were not good enough to Day. Now, I know a lot of people are going to be complaining, moaning, talking about Woodward, off the pitch, transfers, all that good stuff. And you know what? You're well within your rights to do that. But I don't want to start off talking about that today because beyond the transfers, we still had enough in that squad, in that team, on that pitch today to get a result. And we didn't. Now, I'll start this off by saying some of these players may not be fit, may not be match fit, may not be sharp, may be carrying knocks whatever but that is no excuse for what we saw today this was the first game of the season you are supposed to be up for this 38 games to go everyone starting off on zero points let's go and make a statement here today at old trafford in the first game but we didn't we were abysmal from the start poor free kicks being given away paul pogba gave away two three four free kicks in the first 10 minutes gave away two three passes in the first 15 minutes i was scratching my head when he started thinking why is Pogba starting today? He had coronavirus two weeks ago. Like, why is he starting today? He hasn't had a full fitness, uh, full, full preseason with us, whatever preseason we had. He hasn't played for France in the international break. Why is he starting today? Surely Donny van der Beek, who played alongside McTominay, who also started against Villa at Villa Park, would have been the better option. He's played for Holland in the, in, in the UEFA Nations League. He's got a little bit of fitness in him. I didn't get that decision now, maybe because Donny van der Beek's never played in the Premier League before. But we saw when Donny came on, he actually looked quite decent. He was occupying spaces, he was picking up positions, he was linking up the play, and he even got a goal. Why didn't he start bring on Pogba from the bench to try and change things up if needed? Because he clearly wasn't fit enough today. Up front, Rashford, Marshall, Daniel James. Martial had a poor game in terms of what, when he got the ball to him, it never quite stuck to him. Or when he had the chance to shoot, he wouldn't get his shot away. Or when he had a chance to play someone and he wouldn't do that. But he was also starved of service. Daniel James, Marcus Rashford today, not good enough. Not good enough. Marcus Rashford, I can't remember really talking about him during the game. And that's because he didn't do much in that game. Now, I know towards the back end of last season, he had an injury. I know he missed England, England in international duty through an injury. But if you're injured, Ali, don't play him. If he's injured, don't play him. It's as simple as that. We had Daniel James on the right. He's not a right winger. He plays on the left. I know he's better from the left. But please, do something. If that weren't Ali Gunnar Solskjaer saying to Ed Woodward, are you seeing who I need to play on this right wing right now? Are you seeing? Because Daniel James isn't good enough. I'd fear that he's probably not even good enough for our under-23s. Like, because some of the players in the 23s are absolute quality. Would he get in that team? I don't know. And I don't want to be too disrespectful about him because, you know what? I feel sorry for him at times. And it was a hard year for him last year. But ultimately, I have to talk about what I see on the pitch. And it wasn't good enough today. It wasn't good enough. Further back, Scott McTominay alongside Pogba. I thought Scott McTominay did well at times in terms of fighting, scrapping, doing all that. But in terms of quality, he hasn't got it. The guy we looked to for quality next to him, he didn't have it today. He didn't have the legs. He didn't have the temperament. You could probably tell he was unfit, but he started. So you have to judge him on what we saw. Wasn't good enough in the defence. £110 million centre-halves? If we were to sell them today, how much would we get for them? We wouldn't get £80 million combined for both of them. Never mind £80 million for Harry Maguire. We wouldn't, I don't know what we'd get for them. But they don't look like Manchester United centre-halves. You're getting bullied by Jordan Ayew and Wilfred Zaha. Ain't the biggest of strikers. They're not these big strapping lads that are going to fuck you around and throw you around and hurt you. Maguire should have been bullying them. Like, but he doesn't lead his line. Treat Ayew and Zaha like the Greek police, bruv. What are you doing? Like, I don't get it. We don't see him bullying everyone. Sorting the line out, demanding more from Lindelof, demanding more from Shaw, demanding more from, from Fosu Mensa or Wamba Saka, who was ever. I didn't see it. The best player in that defence was Fosu Mensa. And even he's got his, you know, his, <laughs> his problems or his issues. Luke Shaw, I thought he was good against Villa. Poor today. Why are you playing good against Villa and poor today? We're at home, we've got the ball. And that's how I feel when we've got the ball and we've got possession and teams sit back. 
Luke Shaw ain't the one. So if we are being linked to Alex Tiles, please, I beg you, go bring him in. Because he, you know, <laughs> anything better than Shaw going forward, it just wasn't good enough. And that's going throughout the team. You look at David De Gea, two world-class saves. His penalty was a great save, but then he gets done for it, his foot being off the line. The first, the, the, the first half, they could have made it 2-0. World-class save from AU. But again, he doesn't really fill you with confidence. Some of his passing from the back was poor. Like, from back to front, it was shit today. And it just wasn't about fitness. You know, if it was just about fitness, I could take it. But it wasn't. It was about a lot more than that. And it was about simple things. Wanting it. Going out there. Grafting. Fighting for each other. You know, Harry Maguire leading from the back. Like, bro, you've just embarrassed the club on an international level. On an inter like... Like in Greece, you've, inter you've embarrassed the club. Whether the club are sticking by you or not, and they, they should, I would stick by you as well. It all seems very dodgy. You deserve the support of the club. But we've just backed you, bruv. So you need to come into this club, come into this defence and grip the fuck out of everything. Play like a Man United captain. Because you don't look like it at the moment. And it's not just Maguire's fault. That's just one of the things that I'm frustrated about. From back to front, it was shit today. And ultimately, who has to take the blame? Your manager. So Ali has to take the blame for that. I thought Pogba selection, weird. I thought Daniel James selection, we had no other choice. I picked Daniel James in my predicted 11 because I thought he would have started. But personally, Mason Green has got more ability in his one foot than Daniel James has. And you start him, you saw the difference when he come on. But overall, we had enough out there today. Now, as for the board, Ed Woodward and then Punks, the Glazers and them leeches. If that's not a message to you, then I don't know what is. If that isn't a message to you about the state of this team, then I don't know what is. We've played one game. We've already three points behind Arsenal and Chelsea and all these dudes. Like, and if that ain't the message, I don't know, but it could, we could send as many messages as you want to them geezers. Send as many messages. We can lose six games on the trot. You think they give a shit about that? And it shouldn't take a defeat or negative headlines or negative feedback from fans for you like, to finally get off your ass and make some deals happen because you should be doing this all the time in your commercials and in your videos and all that it's all about oh we're the biggest club in the world no one can do what things that we can but then when the clubs are the, the fans are demanding it you're briefing to the press that you're not happy with the clubs the, the fans complaints I use dickheads bruv like I can understand not getting Regil on like, why do you want to put a buyback clause in there? I understand not getting Gareth Bale. Why? It's a big money wages. And, and for a player that ain't really done it in the last year, it's a risk. I understand it. But I can also understand the frustration when those deals don't happen from other fans because of the simple fact that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has been asking for a right winger since last summer and you motherfuckers ain't delivered yet. Like, it's fucking stupid. Oh, are we Man United or not? Because at the moment, it feels like Arsenal under Wenger get Champions League football and we're all right. Put a few decent commercials out there. Keep the fans sweet. You know, we'll be all right. Are we Arsenal now? Is this what we are? Certainly feels like it. Anyway, guys, let us know what you thought in the comments below. I hate to start off the season like this because it's fucking depressing. But thank you for tuning in. Make sure you like, comment, share and subscribe. I have been Adam McCola. United are lost. We're out of here.